I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is a very special guest, a man I've wanted to talk to for a very long time, and I have been able to because Coleman gets to talk to him. <laughs> Red Race gets to talk to him. I never get my James Guy moment. Today, we have the UK British swimming star, James K, Olympian, Olympic medalist, world champion. Buddy, welcome to the pod. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be on here. Absolute pleasure. You know, I get to talk to folks when it's, um, I run the business side of swim, swam. And when, and when, when we, when we move into the business side, I get to have these conversations and I, and I take that advantage fully. Finice is a partner of ours and you, I understand you've re-signed with them. How long have you been with Finice? So I, I signed with Finice. Um, I think it might've been April, 2017. Um, just, just before they launched the, the first rival, um, so it'll be, you know, it be come up to four years now, you know, which is quite nice. So, you know, they've been a tremendous partner of mine and supported me on my journey to obviously the next, obviously Tokyo, and I'm happy to, to, to support them and, and, and beyond. Well, uh, John Mix, the CEO, I just want you to know, we were about to go live and he's like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not wearing my finis, although I can't see it on camera. <laughs> It's it's not a camera. There yeah, it is. Yeah, we're here. We're here. So we're uh, so if you're listening out there, guys, and you want to press pause and hop over to James Guy's bio, you can see it on swimswim.com. Just type in James Guy, and uh, and 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 it'll populate, and you can do a deep dive there, go into his background. Before we um, get into the nitty gritty of him and what's going on with him, and just where he's at right now on the run up to Tokyo and the yeah. 2021 Olympic Games, let's do a little bit more finesse. Uh, in terms of like being in the Finice family, um, it seems like everybody that's a part of the family, they like the family. Is there, is there any Finice product that you're like, Hey, this is, this is what I like. For me, me, I've, um, you know, joining the Finice family back in 2017, what I realized was that, you know, it's a very small, you know, compact family and everyone's quite close. You know, I can talk to John, the CEO, I can talk to his son, I can talk to the UK the guy who looks after the European side of things, Ross Davenport, expert swimmer. You know, every, it's, it's a small, unique family. Um, Luis Maliga, Tony Irvin, you know, uh, some of the guys on the team, you know, I, I feel happy with this uh, little family. Um, but for me, the favorite product would be the Stability Snorkel. And the reason why is because we do a lot of max kick at Bath. And I think whenever I do kick, I always have the snorkel on. You know, I don't like doing kick with my head up because whenever you swim freestyle, you don't have your head up, your head's always down. Um, you know, logic, you know, why would you not have a snorkel on and keep your head down as, for as long as you can? Um, so for me, it's a snorkel every day of the week. Yeah, and uh, I hear that from a lot of Finis athletes. Um, so inside knowledge, my understanding is that Finis Rival 2.0 is it named after you? It's 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 inspired by you. Can you unpack that for me? Yeah, of course. So when it was you know being designed, um, probably the end of 2018, they came out with a suit, and I was like, I don't like it. We need to change a few things. Um, and I was like, listen, being an athlete, I've pretty much raced in every single suit going, like all the arenas, all the speedos or the Mizunos, you know, I've pretty much tried everything out there since I was like 11 or 12. Um, so I know how a suit should fit. And I said, so it needs to be tighter. The, the waist isn't tight enough. You know, it's supposed to be constrictive. You know, it's supposed to, when you do, do freestyle, you know, it's not a massive movement. It should be tight. Um, and they changed it completely. And I was like, once I put it on properly and they changed it for me, I was like, this is it. This is, this is what it should feel like. Um, you know, racing for a long time, you know how a suit should feel. Like, you know, MP just designed his own suit, he knows how it should feel. Um, yeah, and I think can't we, we've got there with the product now, and I absolutely love it. You know, I feel confident in racing in it, I feel like it's fast, you know, and I feel happy with the way things are with it. And yeah, well, let's keep going. You know, I've, I've known the CEO back when they launched the business. It was right after my Olympics, and it was just it was John Mix. It's this guy Pablo Morales, who's a gold medalist. You know, from from the eighties and nineties. Excuse me, yeah. well, from the nineties. He was an Olympian in the eighties. 
That's right. No, he, he, he won medals on relays, but it's uh, in the 80s. But they had one product, and that's how the company started, and it was a monofin, and it looked like they, they yeah. built it in their garage. I had that. I had one of the monofins years ago from like 2010. Uh, I was 13 or 14. I had the monofin, and he's actually signed Pablo Morales. I think it was John as well at the top of the front of monofin, and I had it, you know, and I, I, I loved it. I remember just doing sprints with it all the time as a kid. All right, well, let's 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 chlorinate this thing. Let's let's bring it back to you. Let's bring it back to what's happening right now. You're just coming off of a competition, um, Manchester International Swim Meet. Yeah. You're a swim analyst. Unpack that competition for me because we're at a weird time, and I have no idea how much training you've been able to get in with uh, severe lockdowns in the UK. What's yeah. going on? Okay, so basically, since the middle of December, end of December, Boris Johnson said to us, "Right, everyone's going to lockdown. You know, full UK." Unless you are classed as an elite athlete, you know, falling under, the, under that bracket, you know, perfect. So, so realistically, I, my training has not been affected at all. Um, coming back off the ISL, touch wood, you know, no illness, nothing to do with that. So I had a real good block of really, really hard work. Um, so re- train the whole of November, whole of December, whole of January. And the back of January is our fourth week of, in, of our endurance block. And the week in Manchester, just that's just gone, was our start of our anaerobic phase. So, you know, the real tasty stuff, the, the fast hundreds, all this kind of stuff, the VO2, the race pace. Um, and going into Manchester, the, my first event was a hundred fly on the Friday afternoon. Now, it was invitational only, and it was really, really weird. So, you know, wearing masks downstairs, wearing masks 24-7, you had your own warm-up slot. Um, and for me, you know, that's something that I wasn't really used to. So the breakdown for the swims was the first day was a hundred fly and my warm up slot was between five and five forty five. Um, I had a dip, great heat swim, 52, five, first hundred fly long course in over, just under a year, you know, really comfortable, you know, really happy with that, really confident for the final. Warm up comes around five to five forty five. race isn't, isn't until seven o'clock. So I've got an hour and 15 still to, to, to wait. And I thought, hmm, let's get in at 5.30 and let's try and wangle out and get out about quarter past six. So again at 5.30, and then, you know, you get in, you chat, you chat, yeah, blah, 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 chatting to Tom Dean, my training mate. Um, gets to 5.45, James, you've got to get out. And I'm like, eh, I've, I've done 500 metres. And then they're like, you've got to get out. Sorry, this lot's over. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm screwed. I've done no warm up, so I'm there like panicking, thinking, "What am I going to do? What am I going to do?" So I'm there on the bike, trying to keep warm. Bearing in mind, I've just done like a 500 plop, and I'm thinking, "Oh, s h i t, I've messed this up big time." So race came around seven o'clock, trying to keep warm, trying to keep primed. Fifty two four. I mean, considering the circumstances, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. It's basically a cold swim with no warm up. Um, so I was like, "Right, okay, that cannot cannot happen again because if this happens at the games or." how they'll change the future. I've got to be, be prepared for that. Um, so the next day was the tuna fly. Thought, right, this time I'm going to do things properly. Um, real good warm-up, getting on time. Uh, real good priming routine. Uh, tuna fly was 156.3. Uh, when I'm 53.8, you know, real comfortable. Um, got a load of speed. I was really surprised with that, actually. Um, and then the Sunday was the tuna free, and I was 147.1. And for me, mate, in the middle of February, under hard work, hairy as it can be, tired off a big four-week endurance block and start anaerobic work, you know, it shows I'm in a great place. I feel confident with what I'm doing. And we got back on Monday night. Well, we had the Monday morning off. Don't bear in mind, Manchester's three hours away from Bath. So the last thing I want to do on a Sunday is drive back home for three hours, get my keys to my new place on Monday. So I don't want to waste. I, I, I just want to go home. You know, that's the way it, it, your, your, your mind works. So I'm constantly thinking, just get, just get me home, get me home, get me home, get the keys on Monday, get the keys on Monday. Um, but yeah, and here we are. You know, it was a, it was a great meet, first one of the year, and hopefully we'll get faster and faster. 52.5, 156.3, 200 fly, 147.1, 200 meter freestyle is, um, yes, you, you are on point. You're exactly where you need to be. And before we started recording, we've got to tell our listeners that you were just sharing with me, you moved into a new place. <clears throat> And, yeah. that, and that, so yeah. in the middle of a pandemic, uh, in the middle of trying to maintain your elite status, you're, you're, you're moving into a new place that, you know, moving is like, you know, there's like, there's death, there's divorce, 
there's yeah. moving and there's something else. And those, those are like the most stressful things in life. Yes. So how did you, how, how, have you, how have you managed the move? Oh, you know what, to be fair, Mel, you know, the last few weeks I put my offer in for the house in middle of December. Um, mortgage offer came through, got the keys yesterday, bought my first place, you know, really, really excited. The girlfriend's moved in. Um, I know it's, it's been, you know, as you say, like it is very, very stressful, you know, building kitchens in there, tables, building the sorting the bed out and sofa out, um, you know, trying to manage training on top of that, you know, it is tiring, but you know, I am excited now. Um, and all more focused of course, concentrate on swimming because I've got my, got my own place. It's my own, you know, in, investment. And I'm happy with it. You know, I can't wait for the future. You're a boyfriend with skills. You've got skills. <laughs> so your, your, your girl needs to be very wary because, um, you're not, you're not only an elite athlete, world champion, Olympic medalist, but you can build stuff. <laughs> yeah, I can build stuff and just literally reading the instructions saying, right, put that screw in there, turn that screw. That's what I've been doing for the last three hours. So yeah, we're getting there slowly, but eventually. Uh, I, I was trying to sell it like you were like you were a master carpenter. I, you didn't have oh, to no, play it for no, me. I, don't know. I, I would like to say I was, but I've, yeah, I can't, I can't do much, mate. Honestly, I'm, I'm struggling. I got Tom Dean to try and help me before we lift a few things up. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm careful. Back it up a little bit. Um, you missed the first part of the season of ISL because you had COVID. Um, is, yeah. So is this, you know, how was that experience for you? For any, for anybody who hasn't listened to your your other podcast with Coleman, just what you know, what was what happened? Oh, so this was like middle of September. So we were back in the water from the end of May to the end of to start of August. You know, real trained really really well. A uh, little three week break. Got in at the end of August, trained for, I think, did a three-week build, start the actual work of endurance again, and we were out. I was, Tom Dean, fortunately, had COVID, um, and me and Freya, obviously, being in contact with COVID, we had to isolate for 10 days. So, you were like, oh, no. So, we were literally in our house, you know, just chilling out, watching telly, on the bike, had a bike at home, um, she had a road machine, and honestly, it was just like torture, because the last thing you want to do is be missing training on the Olympic year. Um, you want to do everything you can just to be the, the fit you can possibly be in the best shape you can. And once that's taken away from you, you're thinking you are not allowed to leave your house. And they tell you that, you know, it's mind boggling because you feel slumsy all day. You feel tired. You feel sluggish. It's not nice to be in. Um, and I really felt for Tom Dean because he's had it twice now. Um, you know, and it's, it's one of my, one of my good friends, training partner. And we, we push each other every day. But that period of time, you know, we were going to ISL off no work. Like, and I felt like I'm, I'm not sure that's actually like we've done, we've done no training for it. People are completely different places. I'm pretty sure no one's been what we've been through. You've got Tom Shields and Kerb Russell and Chad going 50 meters off every wall. I'm doing there. I'm there doing two kicks because I can't hold my breath because I've got no fitness there, you know. And it really showed that we had no endurance there. We'd done no work. So I had a point to prove when I came back that this is actually right. I've got a really graph now. And you know, I think the results are shown from that. But that ten day period really, really hurt me. Um, just not being able to do anything. So you were exposed. You didn't test positive. No, I wasn't. No, so you know, I showed no symptoms of it. I showed no, you know, characteristics of it. You know, the tiredness or none of that. I was very, very fortunate. Um, you know, touch wood so far that doesn't happen to me in the future because you can't train, and it's it, it's really, really heartbreaking. But you know, nothing so far. You've been to the big show, you know, you know what it means. You know what it means to be a world champion. You've been to the Olympic games, um, you know, help our listeners help, help people unpack this sort of stress and strain and anxiety that you have on the run up to an Olympics. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm, I'm putting it in a negative light, but it's, um, there is a level of excitement and a level of, of immediacy that's happening right now. So wh how is that affecting you now? You know, I've been thinking about this a long time and comparing myself to where I am now compared to Rio, I feel like I have no pressure on me at all. And the reason being is because, you know, I've not really performed the best I have done the last two years. And for me, that completes me, put me out on the spotlight, you know. Um, I've got to keep, just keep doing what I'm doing. But, you know, I found going to Rio that I was putting a lot of pressure on, a lot of pressure on myself um, where the year before the world championships, you know, I was a young lad, I was free. I had nothing on my shoulders where the, obviously winning the world championships going into the Olympics, you are expected to win the Olympic gold. 
and having that in the back of your head can play a few, a bit game, a few games on you. Um, where this time it's completely changed. You know, no one's raced for two years properly. I didn't race that well at ISL. You know, for me, it's just kind of enjoying it, enjoying being at the sport, doing the hard graph and just enjoy racing because that's what we do it for. It's being on the world stage, being with your friends, racing the best guys in the world. You know, I'm actually excited to go and go and deliver there because I know if I get it right, you know, anything could happen. Um, and I think the way I've been training and the way I've been racing the last weekend, I've kind of shown that what I'm doing is, is, is really, really working. Um, but the mindset I'm going into the game, it's just, it's completely open mind. It's just to enjoy the sport. It's not about pressure and, you know, not enjoying it. You know, it, an athlete's career doesn't last forever. It's only a few years and you don't want to remember that as being like, oh, it was terrible. I had so much pressure, pressure all the time. I wasn't enjoying it. You know, because once it's gone, it's gone. You need to enjoy what you're doing and, just, and have confidence in yourself. Um, and that's the approach I'm taking down. People who don't, people who have not had the Olympic experience don't know. They don't know what the first Olympic Games is like. It is like stepping into this alternate universe. And, there's, and it's built up over your entire career. The fact that you, yes, you had a great world championships and the expectations were high, but the fact that you went to world to the Olympic Games in 16 and, and, and you performed well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you came away with hardware. It's um, that that's a but what, once you get over that hump and have that experience, I, I think the second Olympics is so much easier. Oh, mate, I couldn't one hundred percent. I mean, looking at like the the majority of people, you know, for example, let's say I don't know Nathan Adrian. So his first Olympics was in Beijing, right? He didn't really. I think he got a gold in the freestyle relay in the heats, maybe. I think he did that. The next Olympic Games, he'd been to his first one. Um, and he won the 100 free, you know, because be, because you've done it before, you know what to expect. With well, the first one, you think, oh my God, it's the Olympic Games, the whole world's watching me. That's the, men the mentality a lot of people have. And you can either make you or break you. Um, or some of them are kind of are in the middle. Um, I know another, another example, uh, Ryan Lochte, first game was, was Athens, you know, a couple of medals, I think, in the 4 by 2 and the 200 IM. Beijing, 200 back world record, Olympic gold, 4 by 2 world record, 200 IM medal, um, you know, you know what to expect them with these uh, kind of events because the first one, it's completely unknown, as you said before. It's a completely new universe. You've never done it before. You know, you do your your high school meets. You do your um, NC2As. You know the, the college dual meets. You know what's going to happen. This is completely different. You know, it's a different level. Um, and once you've done that the first time, you know, actually, you know, the dining halls a mile away. I'm not walking there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get the bus these things have a massive part of things, you know, with how to reduce your fatigue and mental stress. Um, Cause you, you've learned from the first time. I remember the first games I went to, but when, well, when it was in Rio, I was walking like 10 K a day. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll walk there. I'll walk there. Next thing you know, my legs are aching. I'm thinking I should have done that. Um, where next time I happen to Tokyo, I tell you that I ain't walking anywhere, you know, and these things you have to take an account into account of because it will affect your performance 100%. It's a, so I have my theory about the first Olympics is that your brain, it's like you step into this dimension that is the Olympics. And from the athlete's point of view, it's like you step into this amusement park with 10, 11,000 of your peers. These people are just like you, even if they're from another sport, they're the best on earth. And it's, and it's, uh, it, your brain is mapping you know, these new experiences over and over and over and it's exhausting and you're walking everywhere. Uh, Second time around, you know, you're pretty focused. It's a different, it's a different yeah. story. It's dialed and that, in. It is. And that, and that, story, that story has not been written yet. But I'll tell you now, I will not make the same mistakes I made in Rio, 100%. Um, and I've learned massively over the, over the time and over the years, just looking back and writing things down, what I've learned, what not to do, what to do. Um, and the main thing is just enjoying it. That's it. It's really simple stuff. Is, are you someone who deals with... Um, you know, do you, do you have issues with, with mood and depression and highs and lows? Um, cause even the, the healthiest, strongest minds and the most stable folks are, are suffering right now. You know, there, there's an epidemic of, um, of depression and, you know, I'm talking to you from the United States and, and it's like, okay, there's COVID, but there is this, um, there's this panic about, uh, you know, a third of, of our nation's young people having suicidal ideations. How have you weathered this, this period? 
you know what, Mel, that's a great question. And I think, um, luckily, I don't have any of that of them, you know, problems or mental issues. It's not exactly, it's just, it's just needing help. Um, I'm a person who deals with things that I need my own space. For example, if I wanted to go and release some energy, um, I'd go fishing just to get away. Because the only stress that I really get or worked up from is, you know, not performing well. That's the only stress that I have in my lifetime, in my life at the minute. Um, you know, I'm happy with everything else. My training's going, my training's going great. Um, but you know, you're right. Over the years, this mental kind of healthy, healthy lifestyle, it has got, it's got bigger and it's got bigger and bigger. Like Phelps, but going into depression, you know, like I'm not surprised because of all that weight on his shoulders and the 25,000 Olympic gold medals he's got, you know, and he thinks, and he stops the spot thinking, what am I going to do next? You know, I'm thinking, that's that's the struggle people go through um and it's having these plans in place you know of what's going to happen next so mm. for example um when i stop swimming i don't want i'm not going to be like oh my god what am i going to do now it's going to have a, a, a simple plan where it's like you do a bit of work now you know i want to go into, into the property real estate we'll be a real estate broker i think over there as you call it um making connections now and working with them people so once i finish my career on a high or whatever it may be it's that smooth transition to the to, to, the, to the real world um, and that's the approach I would go down. Um, but from what, what I know is, you know, across the UK, people who are obviously we're still in a, few, a full UK lockdown, so we can't leave to go to work you, unless you're an elite athlete. My girlfriend's working from home. Um, so it's hard because they can't see their friends. They can't go out to restaurants. They can't go for really walks. It's, it's very, very difficult. Um, and I think hopefully the, the restrictions will lighten up in a few days' time. But for me, the first lockdown I had back in May me and the girlfriend broke up. I wasn't training. I was at my mum and dad's house. You know, it was an absolute mess because I was like, what am I going to do? I'm panicking. Uh, luckily, I had a pool put in the back garden for me, which was quite nice, which is very, very lucky to have. Um, but I just found having a routine really, really helped me every single day. And if you guys are listening out there now, having that routine of, you know, waking up, doing a Zoom call, like a land training session, um, doing some schoolwork or whatever it may be and having that kind of routine that keeps you going, you know, knowing what to do. And the, by, the, by the time you know it, you know, the day's gone and you, you're not slouching around all day doing nothing, um, which is really, really important. I'm glad, I'm glad that you, 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 it sounds like you figured this out um, yeah. in, the, in the process, but the, the in last spring sounded like it was a little bit of a white knuckle moment. I, I did, I, I do hear you talking about your career um, beyond swimming and, uh, Hey buddy, you know, this is just your second Olympics. And I was expecting at least two or three more out of you, uh, because we're fans. Um, but <laughs> you know what, what I, I'm, I think it's awesome that you're, that you're building your career as a professional athlete. Cause that's yeah. the huge, that's the biggest mistake all the peers make is that they're all in, in one area and they don't build a life outside of swim. Of course. But we want you to stay in swim. How, how long, how long do you see yourself? Uh, oh, a long time. Closer? I'll go for as long as I can, like till I'm 32. Like I, I just get carried away. And I, when I see something that excites me, I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, for, for example, I know Kyle Chalmers, he wants to study psychology next year back at university. So, you know, um, it's just having the thing on the side that keeps you taking up because you've got all this time in the day, you know, why not study something online or just, it just keeps your brain ticking over all the time. Rather than coming back, sleeping, eating food, watching telly, going to train again, you know, and I, I feel like I, I would be happier coming back home, doing a bit of work, chilling out, um, not affecting my swimming performance. I just think it's a place where I can go and switch off from the pool. And having that balance, you know, Adam Peters has got this tattoo called uh, equi equilibrium, something in Latin. It's just of that balanced lifestyle, having like everything is equal. You know, your swimming work, your family time, your school work. Um, and I think you guys have nailed that on the college system. You know, you've got that, that system where you, you're working all day, you come and train. And, you know, in the UK for me, I never went to college. I needed Adam Peaty. Um, I know Duncan Scott is there now, but I finished high school and became a, a pro straight away. Um, and that's through, I went down because I knew what I wanted to do in life and that was the goal I've taken. Um, but no, I'll be around for a long time. I'm only, I've just turned 25. Like I'll be going till about 32. So yeah, 
we'll, we'll so if, you're crowd, if you're a James Scott fan out there and you're listening, you just know he's going to stay with us for a long time. I'll, I'll We're going to have to kick him off the deck when at, at the end. Mm-hmm. He's just going to he's going to wear out his welcome. Yeah. And and by the time that happens, what I'm really hearing is that you're going to be a real estate tycoon, or you will have the foundation to be a real estate tycoon. Is is that oh, is that correct? A hundred percent. You know, I, I've always believed whatever I do, I want to be best at it, and that's if that makes me. That means working up to the top. Then I'll 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 do that. Um, and I that's the way I've always been as a person. That's the way I've been taught to do things. You know, if you're gonna be a bin man, be the best bin man. Um, I, I love that. Absolutely love it. You've had the fishing conversation with everybody, but I, it's, I, I just wanted to talk to you about it because okay. when when I was a kid, I would wake up in the morning and go fishing before some practice. And then I'd, you know, I'd go to school, come back from practice, go to school, and I'd go fishing in the afternoon. Yeah before swim afternoon practice. And then, and then if I could, you know, in the, in the, in the days when the summer spring, when you had long days, I'd, I'd go, I'd go fishing again at dusk. What is your fishing routine? What, what, what's, what unpack that for us? Okay. So basically my fishing routine is I'm a match fisherman. So what that means is on the, on a Saturday or Sunday, I'll fish in the competition. So uh, it's 11 to five. So you go to the fishery, you know, it's a stock pond. It's all man-made. And they've put loads of fish in it, uh, all these carp, different types, different kinds of carp in there. And basically, it's the biggest weight wins of fish. So you have these massive nets in there. And you fish, them until five, you draw, you draw a peg out of the tin, and that's where you fish for the day. Um, you know, some are better than others. And you literally, you go to the peg, you set up, 11 o'clock, the whistle blows, and you're there, 11 until five, trying to catch the biggest weight of fish you can. Um, and that's it. You know, they have these massive nets where your, where your box is, you know, and fishing gear is not cheap. It's, I must have about over, I don't know, maybe six or 7,000 pounds worth of fishing gear in my garage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's, but it's my lot, it's my hobby. I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, it does add up over time and it's the biggest weight wins and the winner takes all the prize money and that's it. When I was a kid, I used to watch fishing shows. And I, actually, I, watch it now. I watch it now in bed before I go to sleep with the girlfriend beside me. She's like, what are you watching that for? I'm like, I love it. So, Buddy, when you were a child, you might not even have been born. I, I was on a, I did a show on ESPN that was an adventure yeah. show in, uh, in the late 1990s. And a third, we'd do three stories in a half hour. And, and one of the stories is always a fishing segment. Oh, and, um, but it's a... You know, to me, like the fishing show is like my wife thinks it's insane. The, the oh. fishing show is like the it's, it's the best entertainment of all time. It's brilliant! It's brilliant, and um, even now on TV, like they have it on Sky Sports with the equivalent of your ESPN. Um, and like, I record it, I watch it, and I I think it's I think it's amazing. You know, that for me is my like excitement in, in life. Sometimes just watching that it just makes me, you know, not think about swimming, not think about anything I'm doing. That is my focus for the evening, and I, and I absolutely love it. You know. Um, where I go now, there's world champions there, you know, and I'm like, these guys are legends in this fishing world. Um, so you like being a, I'm a world champion athlete, they're the world champion at fishing. I'm like, I want to talk to you and get some ideas. So yeah, it's, it's quite good. You need to develop your own show. You need <laughs> to have your own fishing show, you know, and it's a, I'm telling you, man, you, you, you can get, you can get your real estate property game going, but you yeah. gotta get your fishing show game going because it's, it's never, you know, it's half of it's about the fishing. The other half is just, you know, what can you mix? What, what, how, how do you mix it up? And, and how do you talk to these guys? It's what's the personalities are like. So yeah, that's keep it. That's a good idea. Man. I agree. I agree. This sounds like you've already got a 6k investment, $6,000 investment. <laughs> no. And that's probably going to grow over time as well. Luckily, you know, I've got a bit of bait sponsor now as well. So that means I get free bait now, which is quite cool. So um, that's one cost that's come down, which is quite nice because it does add up over time. I like it. I like it. Let's bring it back to swim. The, uh, you know, what, what is just, you know, map out your training between now and, and Tokyo. What is, what, what are the cycles going to look like? Okay. So we're currently on our first week of, ana- uh, second week of anaerobic. Now oh, we did a killer set on Tuesday night. Listen to this. This was like badass hard. So we call it the Phelps set. Um, and it was, but Dave changed it. He's called the McNulty the, the McNult, the set. And it was 100 free at your back end 200, right? Off 130. Three 100s easy, twice. Two, two, two 100s of your back end 200. Two ones easy, twice. 
three 100s of your back end of your 200, 100 easy twice. And that's like a kind of like a lactate into a tolerance set. Um, long course, uh, and my slowest time was 53.2. So, you know, I was, it was a pretty good set. You know, I was, I was shifting, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm in great shape if I'm doing that. Um, so second, this is our second week on anaerobic. Uh, next week as well, third week. Then we have a week of regen, so recovery week. Um, two week of aerobic top up. And I'm think, I think we're racing in Manchester again. I'm not sure that all could be out soon. Um, then we start taper for we start taper after the second week, so that's a three week taper into the trials um, where we'll do the business there, and that's the middle of April. Week off, I'm guessing. And that's all I know so far. I'm pretty much pretty certain, but hopefully, menostrums can happen. And, you know, the set collie meet can happen just to get away into racing some sun because you know, it'll be two years. Um, but that's the kind of the outline plan is, you know, the trials get the, the get the, the, the spot secured, get that sorted, uh, men off from set a collie, and then, you know, it's go time. You, you mentioned a recovery week and all that. I appreciate you, you sharing a little bit about that, this, this set that you did. It sounded like it, that, that it, that's a burnout. Um, so during your recovery week, what does a recovery week look like? Recovery week is just, you know, it's, you know, we get smashed for three weeks. It literally, we call it the green, I call it the green mile week. You know, that's what I call it. Um, and this week, well, the next well, next week as well, is going to be really, really tough. So the recovery week for us is just like, it'll be maximum 4K a session. You know, you're holding the gains you've already made, but you can't just keep going up, 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 up. It's just not going to happen. So, you know, we'll kind of c- c- go up, hold it there. So that's the recovery week and then go up again. Um, maximum 4k session uh, a lot of it is just light aerobic swimming we'll do two descent to threshold sessions you know so you're still getting into the system a little bit you know keeping things going um, and that's it it's all about switching off relaxing um, but keeping the gains you've made because you need to go through them adaptations you can't just keep going and going and going um, it's just not I don't think it's doable just to keep going these seven or eight weeks hard blocks of work um, so yeah, that's a recovery week and it's, it's quite nice. Yeah, it's pretty seems cool. like the difference between athletes, swimmers who are good and who are great and those who are great and those who win medals yeah, and, and, and get their names written into history books is that when they rest, they rest differently. Yeah. And, uh, so not everybody does this. <laughs> Some people rest and they, st- and they still don't rest correctly, but it, it's, um, what, so during your recovery week, are you like, I got a little bit more energy. I'm going to yeah. go out tonight. I might go out every night. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I mean, if it was probably not lockdown, then yeah, maybe to go up for some, a few drinks now and again. But, you know, it's for me, you know, it's, I will never, ever drink. And that's only when it's like, usually after a trials or after the major meet in the summer. Um, apart from that, I will never touch it. Um, I just, for me, I don't really enjoy it. It's more the blowout just to relax and with my friends and the girlfriend the family but that's that's all it is to me but i mean the last one we had before we started this one was just you know back home having a pizza for tea playing xbox with the lads that's for me is chilling out and especially switching off in the evenings you know i'm just doing nothing um but yeah you know i feel like you, this year is obviously the biggest year of anyone's life it's the olympic year you know i saw a video on phelps a while ago saying you know when he got really in great shape for rio he treated his body like a Ferrari, you know, you want to put the best fuel you, fuel you can in there. And it's the same now, you know, it's the same, you know, you want, to, you want to be in the best shape as you can, the most body fat you can, most muscle mass, you know, the biggest engine you've got in the work you've been, all the work you've been doing. Um, you know, it's like fine tuning a Formula One car and that's what we are basically. Yeah. You know what? You treat your, your body like a Formula One car. It's uh, what are you putting in it? What's your diet? Oh, so my usual diet would be, Wake up in the morning, um, I'd have a scoop of creatine and a drink, um, beta alanine as well. Then I would train, I'd have, uh, I'd, I'd have no food. Come back, um, it would be toast, eggs, avocado, um, maybe a bowl of porridge. And lunchtime would be uh, yogurt and fruit. Um, in the evenings, come back, have a recovery drink, and then it would be, you know, prawns, noodles, tomato, spinach teriyaki sauce, um, spring onions, and then before bed would be a bowl of yogurt again. And that's it. You know, it's re- it's not rocket science. Um, it's really simple stuff. Um, and that's that's the way it's got to be. You know, swimming's not a 
complicated sport. It's about just doing things right and just working hard. Are you, are you someone who gets a lot of sleep? Do you go to bed early? Yeah, I should go to bed earlier, but sometimes I'm playing with the lads until about half 11, 12 o'clock on the Xbox, shouting, saying, just come on. But, you know, I'm trying to bring it back a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes I'm like, you know what, I'm too tired. It's not happening. I'm going to go to bed early. Um, that happens like once every five months. So, you know, I'm going to bed quite late, half 11 most nights. Yeah. It's, um, it, sounds, it sounds like you're managing your life well in this Olympic year on the run-up. If you, it, you know, it, it seems like everybody that you talk to that's an elite, it, they, they sort of keep their life super simple and uh, they have just a few priorities. So when, you, when you're just moving through the world right now, what are you thinking? I, this is, I got to do three things. This is all I have to think about. Three things is eat, sleep, and well, obviously swim. But that, and, and it's just having, you know, I, you know, I say four things because, you know, the fourth thing for me is wind down time. And that is, you need to have that. You can't just have that, you know, think about swimming the whole time because that's your, that's your job. Once that's done, in your session you want to come back put a film on or go for a coffee with your training mate or it's that time where you just kind of get away from the pool and do something else the fishing or if it's golfing um you know and that's the the fourth thing for me would be that it's just doing something outside the pool is there anything that spins you out is there anything that that like i can't this it this cooks my noodle this scares me and this creates fear in my life do you do you have that one this so all your competitors are listening you can let them know. How did Paul Biederman go one forty two flat and a two and three? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> he, he was he was he was floating, buddy. Yeah, I know. That's the one thing I'm still like, how on earth did he do that? Um, I mean, he was he was he was he was rubberized, floating. That was that was Rome, wasn't it? It was Rome. Yeah, it was, it was Rome, Rome two thousand nine. I, I was there. I saw I, that race. I, this is what it was like in Rome in two thousand nine. Yeah. You, I, I remember this. This epitomizes the 2009 World Championships in Rome. I remember walking down from the stands and, and walking to go get a drink, and I heard the bell and the and the and the, the the noise because it was another world record. And I was just like, and it was like white noise. It meant nothing. Like I didn't even think about it. It was just like what? It was a shrug. It was a whatever. Because every time someone fell in the pool, new world record. Oh my god. Yeah, that's the one thing that's, that's puzzled me, even to this day, I'm thinking, how, how, how did he do it? Uh, obviously, the suits had a massive part of that, but I would love to have seen, you know, see what happens now if we had the suits back right now and see what people could go. That would be really cool. I, here's the thing. A lot of people, a lot of people hated the suits. They, mm. they just hated them. Uh, I felt like the suits was this merging of, of commerce of, of the swimwear companies and swimmers and technology. And it's like, everybody had their own formula one car and yeah. it was a story. And some of the suits by 2009, the Jake had looked crazy. It was like the design started getting really crazy. Yeah. And uh, so I thought it was interesting. I've always wondered, you know, it would be cool if ISL allowed a oh. full body suit because full flotation because you're it's pro um it would just be a specialized suit they would design them in a crazy way and also the pros frankly pros would swim longer and uh so i don't know what do you think about that what do you, what do you think about that? Idea? you know i think that'd be cool but i would like to see isl go long course at some point um you know i'm not the biggest short course fan i just i never have been i feel like it's i feel like it's more who has the best turns um, you know, and I know that, and, you know, I know my underwaters aren't great. Um, and sometimes it's quite, it's quite deflating seeing like, you know, these guys go 15 off every single wall because they're so much faster underwater. And I'm like coming up at 10 meters. Um, but you know, it would be good to see ISL go long course. I think that'd be quite cool. And add the suits in at some point, just for a trial run to see what happens. You should do like a, you should do like a three week training camp with Dressel. Can just oh, yeah. say, hey, I'm I'm dropping in, and I, I want I want to do some underwater work for three weeks. Yeah, please, I, I would love to. I'd love to go and train with uh, Mr. Dressel and Mr. Hass over in the U.S. And um, yeah, I'd lo I'd love that. Absolutely love it. Did your underwater game? It, it, there's a huge advantage because in the United States we swim in these super short 25 yard pools, and yeah. we have so many great swimmers that swim yards and, and everybody goes bananas over them. We get, we, we bang, we wave our pom poms and beat the drum because yeah. they're going to be the next big, huge star. 
and a large portion simply, you know, if you extend that pool out to 50 meters, they, they sink, they can't do it. And um, because they, they're, it's underwater, it's jumping off the walls and that's it. But you know, you know what, I've learned that and that, you know what, you know, fair play to them. If that's their thing and let them rip it, rip, let them rip it up. Um, you know, the short course worlds, you see people you've not seen for a long time, you know, go over there and just and dominate. Even the European short course was a Russian guy who I'd never even heard of before. And he was there just doing 15 off every wall on a 200 fly, which is not easy at all. But then you put him in a long course and I'm like, you, you don't even see his name. Um, but, you know, each, each to the road. And if they want to go and dominate that, that's completely go, go for it. You know, I wish you all the best. But, you know, I, I find I find short course really, really tough. I always have done. And I think I always will do. Because once I hit the wall, my swim speed stops. And that's it. Once I get swimming again, you know, by the time I've got all my speed again, you know, you're turning again. So it's it's hard to get that balance of, because if you come up early, you're getting done on the end of the water phases. So it's, it's, it's a fine margin and fine balance between that. I'm not going to throw people under the bus. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to drag their names through the mud or, or make people hate them. But I, I have been at, at award shows and events uh, where everybody's in a black tie and people are decked out in their finest, you know, and I've leaned into the center of the table and these are all Olympic medalists. And I've said, what do you guys think of swimmers who can swim the short pool, but can't swim the long pool. Yeah. And, uh, and it was, it was unanimous. It was like, you can't swim 50 meters. <laughs> You're not a swimmer. Really? It, it was pretty tough. It was harsh. It was a very, it was a very honest conversation. I'm not saying their names. I will yeah. say this. I agreed with them. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's what I've learned that I, is that short course and long course are completely different sports. They are, they're completely different sports. Um, and that's it. You know, I feel like short course is all about who has the best turns. You know, that's it. It's who has the best turns and can carry that into their swimming stroke. But then long course, you know, it's a different, it's a different story. Um, and you can see, you can see different athletes dominating long course and short course, but then some people are good at both, you know, and which is amazing. Um, but I'm definitely more the long course territory and swimming speed than the short course route. I think if you start ticking off season after season after season on ISL, I have a feeling your your short course meters game is going to transform. I it's going to so. get it's going to improve nice a lot. It, it, I mean, I've been three thirty six for a two, for a four hundred before, which is quite good. I mean, it's not bad, is it? Um, <laughs> yes, it <laughs> it's is. Okay. It's all right. So I mean, that was twenty fourteen, and I never, I never really did a four hundred three properly shaved and tapered or since then, um, or two hundred three shaved and rested before. Um, I went 142, one a couple of times, and that was just like, oh, weak recovery, you know, shape, trim the legs and see what you can go kind of thing. So, you know, I think I could get close to 140 if I tried properly for it. I think I could do that if I trained and worked for it. You're the kind of guy that's like, um, you know, you get two Olympic Games under your belt and you move into the post-Olympic year or maybe that, that middle year between the quads and you're like, maybe I'll just do ISL for a season and that's all I'll do. Mm, I don't think I can do that. No, you, you I, gotta I, do everything. I, I want to do the big things, you know. I mean, <laughs> next year is the Commonwealth Games. It's World Champs. It's you know, it's Europeans again. It's a busy, busy year. Um, and I want to be there. I want to be. I want to do as much as I can in my career before I say, you know what, I'm done. Um, and I'll do everything I can do. But yeah, I love the sport too much to not just to do ISL. I want to do all the big things with, and race my Australian friends. You know, I don't see them very often. Than to just have a laugh with them. Um, even at, even on ISL the last evening we were all talking you know myself Townley Caleb Duncan just mixing with different people and it was just a real good laugh and that's what it's all about I think and I want to be there for when they swim fast and race them at their, at their peak and their prime and I want to do that for as long as I can I've talked to a few elites and they and they've said you know what we could just do ISL and we you know we we could do years where we don't do any FINA events any of your traditional you know, high profile events, we could just do ISL, call that a year and, and, and pick up the FINA events the next year. So that, that's kind of curious. I always like to ask that question. Oh, that's fair. I think if, if they people want to do that, then they can then go for it. Um, but I just couldn't do that. I love the sport too much. I want to be there for everything. I just do. I love it too much. Well, buddy, it's, um, it, it, I, it, you've done a lot of interviews with us. Is there any, is there any question that, that we haven't asked you? They're like, you know, swim, swim should ask me this. Um, 
I don't actually know. What would you say is my best swim I've ever done? Oh God, I'd say running down uh, the the four by two, the 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 rundown. That's because that's <laughs> I mean, maybe it's the most famous. You know, the rundown. I like that. That's quite cool. I mean, actually. here's the thing: reeling people in for in 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 a, in a big way and and just running them down. That's that's a to me. That's 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 the ultimate in swimming. What is that wrong? <laughs> Yeah, you're probably no. You're right. I think the rundown is probably quite cool. Um, well, let me let me unpack the rundown for you. On, on my side, I'm not. I'm I'm, not, I'm supposed to be journalistic and not have any. But I'm a Team USA. I'm a former Team yeah, USA sure. athlete. Yeah, so sure. my, yeah, yeah. My heart, my heart's fallen. I'm like, oh man, this is this is this is embarrassing. This is. Yeah. But yeah. I appreciate it. You respect it. You respect it. You respect those big moments. And mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Okay, no, it's all right. I just, you know, looking back, you know, I remember 2015 four by two freestyle relay, um, and it was it was Michael White on the last leg, and he was, and I thought I was so fired up. I thought I obviously just just won the turn, and I thought you know what, I'm going to get him, and I, and I knew with 150 to go, I thought I've got him because uh, I had I knew I had the other gear to go to. Um, and it was the same in kind of Budapest, you know, I remember Zane Grothy on, on the left-hand lane in lane eight. And at 50 meters, I caught him. I think I was 23, 70 feet or something rapid. And then 143, eight or seven, um, you know, and I, I, even I was shocked at the time, I thought, oh my goodness. Um, but no, the, you are right. Then moments are quite cool and they are, they will last obviously a lifetime. So, yeah. Those, those are the moments where anybody who's ever, anybody who, who, who loves the sport, when, when they witness that, it's like suddenly what you've done is you've created space in their brains and there's a, that, that thumbnail. It's like that history is just burned into people's brains and you have that yeah. moment and yeah. you will 20 years from now, 30 years from now, people don't forget it. It no. makes you a demigod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, man, honestly, I've never looked at it that way, that way before. It's the rundown. Um, it's just, I've always thought, you know, just do what you can. If you, if you if you get beat, you get beat. But if you catch them, you catch them. And I'll always have that mindset of being hungry and being get after it and hunting them down. And I love that. It even gets me fired up even thinking about it, you know. And the work that I've been doing, I think, with Dave McNulty now and all this hard engine work and the threshold and the VO2, you know, that rundown's gonna it's 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 gonna be there again. I think, and I'm I'm excited for it. We're, we're, we're in the latter part of our podcast, so I'm, I might not get in too much trouble by, by talking to you about this because a lot of people get mad at me because I was a 200 butterfly, so I just start asking about 200 yeah. butterfly. Yeah, go for it. I just do 200 fly. So okay. 200 fly is your favorite stroke, right? It's your favorite. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. We'll go with it. Okay, yeah. Well, here's, yeah whoa, whoa. What is more painful? A, a 200 fly, it, when, you're, when, you're, when you're top peak condition, what hurts more? the the two 200, 200 free or 200 fly um well the thing is with this is this is difficult now because when you're doing free you always you kind of still moving where fly if your arms don't go over you've stopped so it would be the 200 fly because what I, even on the weekend i was 25 0 28 7 then i was something like 124 3 and i was like I think I was back, no, 124.4, I was back in 31.9 or something. And the last 15 minutes, my arm, it, it hit me. just It's like the dart was straight in my in my neck. And, you know, I stopped. Where the two and the three, I was 119.2. And I, what did I do? I, I, I kind of held on, but then my arm started scrapping a bit, but I was still moving a bit. So I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking, just stay long, just stay long, just kind of hold the water. Um, but definitely, yeah, two flies got to be hard. It's my my theory is that maybe it's because I focused on two fly a lot. But two hundred fly was always much less painful than the two hundred free because I swam two free. I swam four by two on the right. relay uh, for Team USA. But it's a um, because you always churning, you're always driving in the two hundred yeah. free. Two hundred fly, there it, it is a flow. It's a there's yeah. a pause. It's rhythmical. it's rhythmical. It's that rhythm you can keep going and keep going. And keep going. But if you go out too hard and you put that energy too quickly, you're going to die. And that's the way it works. You're going to so, get the dark, we call it the dark. Yeah. What you're, what you're telling me is 
to and fly would be easier if you train to the level where the dart never happens for you, buddy. And if the dart never happens for you, it's easier than two and three. The, you no, know, in, in the tour and fly, if the dart never happens for you on on your on, on in the tour and fly, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna pop a swim that you're you're gonna be like, I didn't know I could do that. Yeah, you know, I I feel like I agree. Um, if the dart doesn't happen, you have the back end. You know, you're going to one fifty three. Yeah, I think you are. Um, what was what was Milak's split on the tuna fly in, in Guangzhou? Do you know what it was? I don't know what it was. And when he went to one fifty, yeah, I don't know. I was sitting there with my jaw on the ground the entire time. Yeah, this is what I did after he did that swim. This is what I did after he he I I called up. Tom Malchow, I called up Davis Tarwater. I called yeah. up, um, I called up a few guys who, had, who were either Olympic champions or Olympic medalists yeah. or, or collegiate champions, and I said, "Hey, I, I just wanted to call you because I just figured out that you're effing slow, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I just figured you're way effing slow." Yeah, they just called me back and said, "We figured out that you are too," because <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's just so mind-boggling. Yeah. So here's, Let's so let's let's nerd it up a little bit. It's yeah. um, you know, it's. I, I think at the Olympics, time doesn't matter. You you yeah. got to hit the water and you got to race and you, and, you, and it's who puts their hand on the wall first. About racing the meet the the major meets are about racing and the, the times a bonus. It doesn't matter if you win a two hundred Olympic gold in one fifty, you are still the Olympic champion. It doesn't matter. The times are irrelevant. That's the bonus. It's about racing, and that's what the major meets are always about. Um, where I think, well, obviously Phelps in Beijing, some of his some of his events were he was going for the time two three he went for the time four am was kind of going for the time as well he wanted to get the world record two fly was about the time he knew he was going to win it um, but I think majority of it is about racing and that's what it's about I think it is it's, it is and, and we we always make predictions about what times are going to be in. and some people pop great swims at the Olympic Games yeah. and lots of times the the heats are not fast and it's just a race. Yeah, no, I agree. BBC is listening right now, and they're they're going to determine whether or not you can be a sports analyst in the future, along with your fishing show and your real estate <laughs> property company. Yeah, so what? Give me your your expert analysis. Break down break down the the hunter fly, two hundred free, two hundred fly. What what are, you, what are you thinking in Tokyo? Two fly. If it happens, I don't think it will because I have a lot of relays to do, and they're all medal opportunities. I'm thinking, okay. oh, and I make myself tired, but I will. I'm, I'm considering it now for the trials. I'm considering it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go on the cautious side and just go 154.9. That's my cautious time. Um, because usually it's about plus two, isn't it? Take the taper off, it's plus, minus two. Um, 100 fly is going to get tasty. Um, and I know my back end's there. But what I've been doing in the pool, you know, training wise, going 25 high to, to, to 100 back end fly 50 is like no problem for me the engine's there it now it's just putting it together um i'm gonna say 50 point mid cautious you know this we know dressel's right up there we know that but the, everything else is wide open um and the tuna free you know i'm i don't know i don't know I want to see what I can do at trials first. Then we can have another podcast and we'll go through it again. That's, that's, that's the next thing. That's the best. Thing. That's, that's, let's keep people guessing because people think that James Guy is written off and he's not coming back. But I can tell you now, he's not going anywhere. That's not that's not the case. I love it. I love yeah. it. Is that fair? No, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so it, it's. Um... I like that. I, I appreciate your vulnerability and honesty and your 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 expert analysis on yourself no so the you know in the united states the, the, we have we have big stars and uh you know if you step into a media room all attention goes to them they get a lot of the ink and yeah. um and uh, in my day it was matt beyond he, he won seven olympic medals in 1988 and he was and then it was yeah. like popov in 92 was coming on um so you know you're you're living in the world of adam Peaty. And is 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 he as as big as as I he appears to be in in the UK as as big a star? Um, you know, Pete is one of my best friends, and I will we talk all the time. Um, but his name is getting bigger. One thing that I realize is that you have these different categories, right? And you know, we'll come back to Pete in a second. So if you ask Beckham, David Beckham, you know David Beckham is right. Mm-hmm. So years ago, 
that everyone knew who Beckham was in this in the football world. Tick. Everyone knew who Beckham was in the sporting world. Tick. You ask a housewife who who Beckham who, who knew Beckham was, it'd say tick. Now I think Petey's there with the swing world tick, sporting world tick, housewife, he's not quite there yet. Um do you know what I mean? That's the way I look at it. Um, if, if the housewife doesn't know who you are, you're not, you're, yeah, you're not truly yeah, famous. Yeah, no, but I think he's getting there. The way he's going, the way he's really come across as a, as a character, the way he dominates the sport, and I'm pretty sure he'll dominate in, in Tokyo as well. You know, I want him to go 53 point on 100 breasts. That's what I'd love, that's what I'd love to see him do. Um, but, you know, you've got to remember swimming's not a big sport. It's just not the way – it's just not like football. Um, and obviously he's made it bigger in the UK and hopefully, you know, hopefully I can be, be, be part of that at some point. Um, but you know, I think he's getting there. I think he really is getting there, but he's got, he's got a good, he's got a good Instagram game going. He's got a good Instagram game going, you know, he's got that going on the Twitter game and social media. He's got that spot on. Um, but I think in the UK, the biggest sport is football and rugby and, and cricket. Those are the top three people absolutely love. Um, and swimming's just not there. I think Olympic Games time, the most watched sports are, foot, are swimming athletics and gymnastics, which is quite cool, to be fair. So hopefully that'll boost everyone's morale and profile right up. You've got to – I'm, I'm liking your Instagram game. Hey, listen, guys, if you're out there, you, you need to press pause. Go to, in, go to Instagram, follow james.g.guy. Yeah. He, he's closing in on 100,000 followers. Please, let's get to 100k. Please, that'd be. Lovely. I just, I just, I just, I just got him closer. I'm following him right now. Thank you, Mel. And uh, and and I and I'm I'm gonna do a deep dive on your Instagram game and yeah, see what's up. Go, have a scroll, have a have a nosy, see what you think, buddy. I like talking to you, and uh, hopefully we'll come back and we we can talk to you. Maybe we can we can unpack what's happening after trials. Yeah, I, I would love to. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I love being honest with you guys and just being open with you. I think that's the best way. Do you have any parting thoughts? Um, no, but I'll actually, before you, before I do go, I watched one of your videos from 2010 and you were, you were in a room with Lochte and it might have been Nathan Adrian and he had his dog there. It might have been one of your first videos right back in the day. And I, I, I remember watching it like a few years ago and thinking, what's he doing? Just talking, obviously. And that's grown to be the swim swam. Um, and Lochte had the long hair, he had, he had, he had the, the, the grills in and like, this was like 20, 2009. Um, <laughs> and there was one of the things as well made me laugh is when it was Pampax 2010 and it was like, it was Fraser Holmes going to the four by two and you were like, Phelps did like, you were like, unlucky Fraser Holmes, not hard on the two to three. Do you remember that race? Do you remember that you just shut him down? I was literally crying on that. It was a great, great commentary. Yeah. Um, they stuck out to me. They stuck out and they're still in my head today. I remember them from 2010. That's almost, that's 11 years ago. So so what they so when swimming is on television in the United States, it, it's for it's NBC, and I, every so often I sub for for when people are sick. So if if Rowdy Gaines is sick, um, this is what they tell me: you're you're third or fourth slot. So it's like if Rowdy Gaines is sick, then like Elizabeth yeah. Beisel has to be sick, then Natalie Coglan has to be sick, and then yeah. they get the phone call. I get the phone call, and they're always very very precise and full disclosure. Let them know, let me know that you're like. You're, you're not our first call. You're not our second call. You're not our third call. You're our fourth oh. call. It's painful, man. It's painful. I can imagine. I'd love to see you and Basil go in with it. That'd be a real. That'd be really good to watch. I mean, Basil has the best laugh I've ever heard in my life, and you guys would be a great commentary couple. I think that'd be great. Basil's awesome, but yeah. it, 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 we would be we would be playing second fiddle to your fishing show. I expect <laughs> to see it in the future. I want updates the next time <laughs> we talk. But it's coming. It's coming. Do, just focus. We'll unpack this again after UK Olympic trials. Today, we were talking to James Guy, world champion, Olympian, Olympic medalist, and one of the coolest guys in swimming. This is a Swim Swim podcast. You've been listening to the Swim Swim podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.